Hello Automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and today I'm going to help you actually work from home because this is a new reality that we're all dealing with and there's some really interesting capabilities within IFTTT and their pro capability. So I have upgraded my account to pro and I'm going to create a set of applets today that will help you work from home. We're going to start with the trigger service. And one of the great things about Google Calendar is that when any event starts, then you can actually, number one, choose the calendar and number two, choose to kind of prepare things a little bit earlier. So I can actually use my work calendar and then I can also use the 15 minutes or 30 minutes or 45 minutes before the event starts as my trigger time. So I've created that trigger and now I'm going to add a number of events or a number of actions to that. And one of the great devices that I use is SwitchBot. And these little devices can press a button and that's really important for a number of appliances. So I'm going to use the PC bot and this is the little switch bot that sticks to my computer and I can actually turn on my computer with just that little press. Now the nice thing about SwitchBot and Samsung SmartThings is that they also can work together and so I can actually turn on my other SwitchBot which is the, I just gotta find it here, Coffee Pot. So I'm able to actually choose just to use SmartThings if I'd like but SwitchBot is a really powerful device that allows me to turn on my computer and turn on my coffee pot in preparation. This is 15 minutes before. Now you might wanna split this up into other applets, but I also wanna prepare the lighting in my space. And I can use Philips Hue for that. I could use Samsung SmartThings. I could use the Smart Life or the LifeX service. Whatever type of lighting system you have, you can go ahead and you can set a scene in a room if you'd like to do that. So we can go through all the different scenes that we have and you know something like Energize in our office might be a really effective thing to do. The other thing you might wanna think about is, and I'm going to use the Smart Life service here, if you have a number of smart plugs and maybe they're attached to a little heater, you can go ahead and do that. So you saw I have the switch one. I also have all these different outlets that could be attached to things like heaters or humidifiers or uh, different devices that you wanna turn on to kind of prepare the mood in your space. And I'm gonna show you uh, one other of those. So let's just say I wanted to turn on one of these plugs. I could go ahead and do that. But the other thing that I really like about Smart Life is you can create a little scene and for example, if you had a diffuser with some calming essential oils in it in your space, you could prep the room 15 minutes in advance and actually use that within this routine. The other thing that's likely that you wanna do is you wanna prep the space for the temperature. And I know offices can often get really hot. And so maybe while you're having a meeting, you just wanna set your thermostat for a number of hours, probably just the single hour, set the desired temperature. And all of this is happening just when the event starts and actually 15 minutes before the event. What I haven't done here because I'm using my work calendar within Google Calendar is filter by any sort of time or anything like that. And I'm just going to create this applet, but later in the tutorial, I will show you how to filter by time through another one of the applets we're going to create. So I've just named this one set up my home office. I'm going to hit finish and that is now implemented. Of course I can edit it later, but I'm going to move on 
to our second applet, which is about kind of preparing our home and the people in our home for this event going on. So we're going to create another applet and we're going to use Google Calendar as the trigger service again. But this time when any event starts, and again, I'm going to use that work calendar, but I'm going to choose zero minutes. So this is right when the event starts. I'm going to basically let people know in my home that this is going on. And there's a couple of different ways to do that. Number one, lighting is a great signifier for people, especially if you have a light just outside your office door that you could attach to a lighting service and you could go ahead and change that to maybe a red light color. So you could just say red to kind of signify that people shouldn't enter the space. Just for the sake of picking something, because I don't actually have a light like that, I'm going to choose the front entry, change it to red, and create that action. So right when my event starts, there's a visual notification for people in my home. The other way that I think is really easy to notify people is actually to use the notification service. Now, what you have to think about here is if you're just using notifications, that's going to be with whoever has the If This Then That application installed on their phone. Whether or not they have the phone is another whole thing, but you can send a notification that a title of your event has started at this time and that creates a really easy notification. Now you can do a little bit more, especially if you have Android, you can send an SMS with a specific phone number in it and then the title of the meeting as well. So you're able to actually send that specific SMS. There's also a click send SMS service and you would have to connect that and that's a whole separate account, but this allows you to send those messages all over the place. So for now, this is a really simple application. Anytime an event starts on my work calendar, I'm going to change the hue light to red so people don't come in and I'm going to send a notification or you could use one of those other SMS services. Now, what I'm going to tell you is that there's a much deeper way to actually engage something like a Sono speaker within Samsung SmartThings to output a custom message just once when the that event starts. So I'll leave a tutorial down below. It's going to take a lot of things like virtual switches and a connection to Samsung smart things, but you can use Sonos and those speakers to deliver a custom message when your meeting starts. So for now, we're just going to name the applet and I'm going to call it notify house members not to enter when the meeting starts. For part three of this, you know what? There's lots of opportunities for creating custom lists and for managing things within say the Google Home or Amazon's ecosystem. But if this then that gives us some additional options. Now, what I'm going to show you is still using the Google Assistant. So you would be able to trigger this kind of a thing on a Google Home smart speaker a Google Smart Display or the Google Assistant on your phone or tablet. Now, the Google Assistant here has a really interesting capability with if this then that. I could put in a number and a text ingredient if I'd like, but for most people, you know what you wanna do is capture an idea. So what you get with this interface of saying a phrase with a text ingredient is you get the ability to say whatever you want to the Google Assistant and then you can enter this in where you would actually say that specific text ingredient. I went ahead and filled these all in and we're just gonna say it's a general idea for now, but you might have something that you wanna specifically start to track at any time and this is an easy thing to just create really quickly. So I have an idea named and then whatever your idea would be, if you've woken the Google Assistant and then you say that to it, she's going to respond with, okay, I've logged your idea, this. now. You also have additional ways that you could say this. My new idea is this, log my idea named this, and you can choose from a few languages. So you're not just stuck in English anymore, and that's one of the really powerful things about the Google Assistant in general. Now, I've created that trigger, and I can now use a number of different action 
services here to really create some great functionality or some great lists. So Trello is a wonderful service that you can go get for free and you can work with teams. Now you can pick a board and you can also pick the list name. So if you didn't already have a list within Trello, you could create one here and I'll just create one called my new ideas and then where you wanna position this new idea, maybe you want the new ideas always sitting at the top of the list. But what you can do with the title, and I think this is where most people will use it, is that they will put that text field or the special text ingredient that we created, that will be the title of your actual new idea here and that's really important and you can put it in the description you can get really fancy with your description you can assign it directly to team members if you're using this Trello service kind of at its full and you can apply all kinds of labels and all kinds of things now I'm not going to do any of that because the basic idea is just to save an item but we can also use some other services and I'm going to introduce a couple of simple ideas if you're a Google Assistant user you're probably going to be using Android's SMS service and therefore you could send yourself an SMS you can also use this click send SMS service and you also have the ability to just send yourself a notification through the if this then that application the other one that is really powerful here that I have used a lot and might extend your whole smart home in the future if you think about this you can add a row to a spreadsheet in Google Sheets now you could call this spreadsheet whatever you wanted but there you go there's that text field again and you can change the drive folder path as well so we could call this my work ideas and we can even call the spreadsheet new work ideas for my boss and now you have a formatted row with the day you created it and the text field that text ingredient your idea all getting pushed in and this allows you to save those lists in a number of different places so we have our three applets, but I have one that I think is the most important because honestly, for me, I hate waking up too early. And so what we're going to do is kind of hearkening back and then we're going to get a little more complicated. But you remember when we created this applet that was based off of our meeting days. And so we used Google Calendar we checked when the event was starting and we were using our work calendar now I also what I'm going to do with this one is start at 45 minutes earlier and this is going to allow me to set up my entire home and actually wake myself up 45 minutes before my event starts and then I'm going to show you how to filter this down to make sure that it's actually a morning meeting that you have to wake up for the first thing I'm going to do is set up the device that's going to wake me up and I'm going to use Sonos here today. Those are some of the best speakers out there and they connect really well with if this then that. So what I'm able to do is play a favorite but I also probably want to make sure I'm not going to get blown away by this. So we're going to start by setting the volume. I'm going to put it at about 20 and then I can choose my speakers and the rooms that are grouped with this specific speaker. So create that action and that means 45 minutes before my calendar event, my volume is set to 20 on my Sonos. And then what I'm also going to do is pick the favorite or the stream that I want to. You could also just hit resume to kind of play the last thing that you had play on your Sonos speaker, but I like choosing my specific favorite. So now what we've done is set the volume and then started playing our favorite on our Sonos speakers. And now we can set the rest of our home. And I think, again, we want to probably set that thermostat and kind of get it ready for our meeting. And we have that other meeting 
applet going on but you could set this to a different temperature to kind of warm up your home a little bit maybe wake you up a little bit from the evening and this will get you to the point where you're ready to go the other thing is usually you want to wake up with some lights on and so we can turn on a specific scene in your bedroom maybe you set something up that you really enjoy and for me I have this dimmed scene that kind of just keeps the lighting low but it's going to wake me up still in conjunction with the speakers of course you could set anything else triggering that you've seen me do with devices like switchbot or wise or smart things and all those other different connected services but I think you get the idea you could really just start your morning 45 minutes before that first meeting. Now we have some extra options for you here today. So you could actually send a notification to yourself and this seems simple, but just wait till the end here when I show you some of the customized scripting we can do. And then based on who you are, you might wanna know a little bit more about what the weather is like or some of the conditions today. And so we've created this notification and we're gonna use that heavily, but what we have to do is actually create what's called a query. What the query does is it grabs and pulls in a number of pieces of information from a service. And I'm going to use the weather underground. This is what I use for weather and we can get the current weather. So for now, I'm going to pull the two day forecast. You're going to select your location. And then once you've done that, you hit create query. And now it is going to be available within our filter. So this is where we have to write some JavaScript code, but we've pulled in a lot of data and a lot of services, and this is going to allow you to really customize this kind of a situation. So down below, I have access to my trigger data. Now, if there is a video call URL and say I'm using my phone, that might be a really useful thing to put in the notification. Also, I probably wanna use the start and the title or description in that notification that I send to myself. But I could also use these query results to give myself some information. So you can see something like today's condition, it's forecasted condition, when the sunrise is coming up, cause you know, you might be up either before or after that. And then you can grab the low and the high in either Fahrenheit or Celsius, get the UV index, all of those things and really modify what you're doing based on those. The set of actions is obviously what we're doing, but you get this little special function here that you could use. And if you wanted to skip anything you're doing based on, let's say it's really cold outside for the day, maybe you don't want to set your Ecobee or you want to change the setting that you're using. One of the great things that If This Then That has done is they've created this help article and it has a really useful piece of script here actually and i'm going to grab that and then we're going to modify that so what it's doing is creating a variable called current hour and then it's using the current time and then it goes dot hour which allows it to grab the hour this allows it to basically have a value from 0 to 23 that we can use to kind of filter our actions on. So for me, I want to structure this if statement to, between, to be between a certain set of hours. Otherwise, it's not likely that I want to start my Sono speaker. That would happen throughout the day anytime I had something in that work calendar, and that would probably be something most people would not want to have happen. So because the hour of midnight is actually the zero hour, then I wanna start somewhere around six o'clock. So if the current hour is greater or equal to six, or if it's less or equal to, let's say nine, or maybe you wanna go to 10, then we wanna do a set of actions. Else, 
it is likely that we want to skip and that's what you can do with the Sono. So we can do the skip the play favorite and we can also skip the set volume routine here. Now of course you could flip this condition around and basically go to if it's less than 6 or it's greater than 10 then we want to skip this and otherwise we don't have an else statement. So I just wanted to show you kind of the two ways that you could structure your if statement. If there's other things that you'd like to skip, well, then you can do that as well. Of course, maybe you don't want your thermostat and you probably don't want your lights to always go to that specific scene. So you can just continue to put these different actions that you don't want to have happen into here. And if you just put them all in, then you would skip the whole applet here and that would mean that it could run in the background and you wouldn't have to worry about it so you could even skip the whole notification that it was even running and you wouldn't know every time 45 minutes before an event happened in your work calendar if it's outside of these hours. Now the other thing we want to do is handle that custom notification that I talked about and this can be a lot of fun actually. So what we're going to do is craft ourselves a message. Now your phone may not show this perfectly if you get too long. So you want to consider that a little bit and what I did is I grabbed that if notification dot send notification dot set message. I grabbed that and I pasted it here after the word else. So if the current hour is less than six o'clock or it's greater than 10 o'clock, then I wanna skip all these things. Otherwise, I'd like a notification about what's going on today. This is where we can use these query results. So if you wanted to have maybe just a URL to go to, you could paste that into your notification. But let's say that we just wanted to grab the high temperature today. I'm going to start with a quote sign and they added the second quote sign there. That's one of the nice things about if this then that pro. And what I want to say is that today's high temperature is the function that I just grabbed down below from actually the weather underground. And this is the two day forecast and the high temperature. So this would give me the high temperature plus, and you have to put this plus between the different components of the string that you're building. So in between these brackets, this is a whole string and so every kind of different component has to have that plus. So I'm going to start another set of brackets and say your meeting is called and then I'll be pasting in the title from my Google event and I'll be saying and starts at And then I've used the start time here and this is again just part of my trigger data. So you can create these really complicated notifications to go out and we're basing all of this on making sure that it's the right time of day. If you wanted, you could even base maybe setting the Ecobee based on the temperature outside and you would have that ability to do within this whole system as well. But for today, this is a great piece of filter code that allows you to have your whole home get set up early in the morning when you have an event and you have that variable wake up time, which is again, something I absolutely love the idea of. So I'm going to hit continue and then we're just gonna name this applet I've called it get ready for my early meeting and we're able to at any time, if we don't like that filter code, we can actually go back in and edit that. Now what you're going to need is a full walkthrough of how to write this different code and also of the if this then that pro service in general as well as some other examples of how you can really take advantage of the new if this then that pro. So that playlist is up on screen right now. Otherwise guys, thanks for watching and of course don't hate, automate.